going on people this is going to be um, a sensitive subject but we're not going to insult this is not going to be a place where guys are going to get insulted clowned I really want to have this conversation and let me set the groundwork When the internet came of age with the advent of the smartphone, the smartphone changed the game. In the late 90s, early 2000s, we had access to the internet. It was just an extension of how human beings interacted and communicated. But with the smartphone, the entire game changed. So now people actually have a mobile computer at their fingertips. And one of the biggest things that happened was attention for women and men. Men and women used to have to actually, singles had to actually go out to places to interact. Married, as, married people would do married things, but single people had the entire dating economy. Movies, dinner, plays, clubs, nightclubs. There was an entire industry dedicated to singles. But as attention, but as Match.com, Plenty of Fish, okay, you name it, as people started trying to become more efficient and meet people here, what happens? The average woman is able to go onto these platforms and get hundreds of guys from, regardless if she's interested in that, attention. The dating environment has completely changed as far as attention. Shout out to Alan Roger Curry. Frat brother talked about Mo One. He has been talking about no free attention, no free attention back in the early 90s. But now today, women have access to more free attention than human beings are equipped to deal with. As such, it has become increasingly more difficult for guys who are not alpha males or alpha males of beta tendon, with beta traits, shout out to Alan Roger Curry, to, act, to actually go out and meet a woman, approach a woman, talk to her, seduce her, romance her, and actually end up having sex and pursuing a romantic relationship. I'll tell you right now, I have never had a problem with getting women, getting the kind of woman I want, getting access to the woman I want. I've never really, I believe that I can actually talk to most women. That's the kind of confidence I have. I, I believe that most women find me attractive. That has been my lived experience. And uh, even the women who I might not be there, their particular thing, I still know that better than 80% of the women out there are going to be interested. That puts me in this category over here. But I also have friends and colleagues that are right there in the middle. And even more so that are extremely unsuccessful. My college best friend, his name was D. D was a good looking dude, smart engineer. Uh, on paper, he had things going for him, but he was socially awkward. There was nothing about this dude that said smooth, cool, charismatic. So the only way he could end up having sex was pity sex. He'd end up having to 
luck, a woman just basically take pity on him and give him some, or he'd have to resort to prostitutes. This was in the late eighties and nineties. And the reality is this, for today, there are men hiding in plain sight. You might be one of them who are gainfully employed, average to above average looks. On paper, solid, decent citizen. And 60 years ago, these guys would have likely been married. But today, these guys are entering into their 30s, 40s, and approaching their 50s as functioning virgins, meaning the last sexual experience or the only sexual experience they had was back in high school or college. Why? Because high school and college is the last time where men and women are in the same place, same environment, talking about the same things, and they could be beta males and just happen to be in a situation to where you're playing video games or you end up at somebody's dorm room or something, and then you just luck up into sex these guys never were able to make it happen. It was always the women initiating or basically taking pity on them and giving you some mercy coochie. What happens when these guys are no longer in college or on the dorms? They go out into the world, move into a neighborhood. It's work, home, work, home. There's nowhere to go meet women. There's no way to go sit next to somebody and be the beta male nice guy and then have a woman take because women got too many options so here's what we have we have beta males we have men who are 40 years old who've had less than three sexual partners in their entire lives yeah 40 years old fewer than three sexual partners. I mean, three, fewer than three sexual experiences. One to two partners, maybe. I know this is gonna be, a, I need you guys to understand, if you are like me, a guy who's never had problems with women, I didn't know these guys even existed in these numbers. I mean, I knew my homeboy growing up, but I just thought he was a little strange. I'm all the guys I used to hang around, you know, we, we could get women. But today, what impact does being, and this is why I want to make the broadcast, women are not the enemy. See, what I'm all start, starting to see is younger guys in their early 20s seeing the difficulty men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond are having, listening to all this content, and getting angry with women. Worrying about, you know, I don't want to get with a woman because the family court and child support, da, 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 da. And I ask you, when was the last time you actually approached a woman? Because here's the reality. In corporate America, entry level and lower level supervisory, there is a cap to how high an unmarried man will likely ascend beyond entry level or lower supervisory roles, middle management, upper management, executive management, people are married at that level at a rate of about 90%. If you want to move up, you are going to have to get married. Better to be, you can have 10 divorces, it does not matter. But in order to move up, you must be married. It is an unwritten rule, but it is there and it's firm. Men who are unmarried are looked at as unstable. Human beings have evolved to not trust unattached men. And if you think, well, 
you know, this movement, that movement, all these things are going to change corporate policies, you are, you are sorely mistaken. Jeff Bezos will remarry. And the reality is this, for the rank and file guy, alpha males, pure alpha males and alpha tendencies are about 5% of all men. 5%, Alan Roger Curry, alpha male strategies, Alan Roger Curry was born an alpha male. Alpha male strategies became an alpha male. I believe you can actually, I know you can move through these rankings, um, but 5% are alpha males and want to live life as an alpha male. That means 95% of men want a woman. For the short term, long term, 95% of men have evolved to want women. We got to start there. Unmarried professional men are less likely to be promoted to middle class or middle management or upper management. Many men today are living life as beta males with beta male traits. Most men who are in sales today don't want to be in sales. I coach and work with men who are in sales, involuntarily celibate. What that means is, I know there's a term in cell. In sales usually are synonymous with virgins. But there's a there's a there's an incel who's had sex, but it's been one or two times, and it was decades ago. What do you do with a late thirties or forty year old man who hasn't had sex in twenty years? That guy does not want to be that. Yet he can, yet he cannot go out and talk to a woman, strike up a conversation, and romance her seduce her does not he, he has not learned how to be that smooth operator so that's how these guys end up going year after year after year after year with no no woman i know this is hard for some guys to believe i'm trust me i didn't understand it but they exist and they're not and they're not weirdos they're not crazy. What's happening is the environment has changed. Women have access to more attention. They got access to more guys. And these guys are not the best salespeople. They're just not, they're just not, they're just not smooth like that. And if you're just not smooth like that, and if you combine that with not going out and combine that with being average or below average looks, you know, how you, you got too many struggles going on. How are you going to make that happen? If, if guys like myself, guys like Alpha Male Strategies getting flaked on, what, what luck do these guys have? And I'm not, so my goal is to actually, let's talk about it because there is hope for you guys, but you got to understand where you're at. Today, it's more common for the typical woman to be, more sexually experienced, more sexually aggressive, and more dominant. If and when guys like this end up having sex, it's a woman making it happen. I want you to think about the, the kind of guy I'm talking about. How does a beta male with low sexual charisma move up in the world? How does he get promoted? How do other people feel about him in ways that they won't describe? You didn't know they existed either. Well, see, the thing is, women really can't understand this because women, you have, you have a vagina. Someone will use it. I am talking about men who I've seen face to face, who I know are solid dudes, who are suffering in silence because they want nothing more. They just want one woman. They just want access to one. And I feel 
sorry for these guys because the longer this goes on. And I am I wonder why my success rate as a sales person is greatly affected or the fact I can't relate to other married men. Let's talk about it, David, because the reality is this. The longer this goes on, these guys are going to reach late middle age and they're going to be right to be taken advantage of. Kevin Samuels has been married twice. And if I wanted to, I could be married by the end of the year. See, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not against getting married. I'm not. I just know one thing, knowing what I know now, I pick better. See, that's the difference. Why, why are upper man, middle management and upper management guys, why don't they have the problems a lot of the guys in the manospheres have? They know all the same things. Is because they understand the value of being married. To be married, if you want to be taken seriously as a man, an older man, you have to be married. There's nothing worse than being an old playboy trying to move up in a company. It's pathetic. And the reality for me is, if I wanted, to, if I wanted to be married to, if I wanted to be married, I could be married by winter time, for full stop. I could go out there in the world and find a feminine, beautiful, inspirational woman to get on my program and who would love to be my wife. I know that. Now, if I know I could go find a wife, I want you to think about the difference between the confidence and the self-esteem that I have versus a guy who can't even get a date. Talking about men who, can't, who cannot approach a woman to get a date. Three strikes and out in marriage. See, that's another thing I'm going to say about black men. Only black men look at marriage this way. Black men look at marriage as a failure. Your president, your, your president has been what divorced four times. They don't sweat it. I, I, I don't. I don't look at the way black America looks at stuff. No, look in Hollywood. How many times do you see uh, Tom Likas married four times? You look at people. I know guys who have been married five times. And they're looking for their next wife. Again, what do they know that you don't know? And instead of worrying about what could happen, what the reality is this. What about those of us that require diversity? I found marriage and one woman to be incredibly boring. I might remarry when an older, but I'm only 32. There you go, you're 32. What's gonna happen when you're 50? How much pussy do you need, man? I mean, uh, call in, call in, because here's what needs to happen. I can guarantee you this. Most of you guys will never get to my numbers as far as sexual partners. I've had sex with hundreds of women, hundreds. And I'm talking about guys who have a problem having sex with one. In one semester in college, I had sex with 38 women. 38 in one semester. And I still lost the contest. The guy who won the contest had 45. And it was a known contest. We wanted to see who could get laid the most in one semester. Me, Chris, Ali, and Drew. The entire, all the guys. Mike topped us out with 45. Ali came in with 42. I came in with 38. Considering that I was a transfer and I'd only been in the, in, the, in the area for three months, I think I did pretty damn well. Have you had sex with 38 women in one semester? And understand something, I don't deal with ugly women. I've never slept with a fat chick, an ugly chick. I got standards. I've never messed around with a vampire. Any woman I've ever been with could run up on me in public and start screaming and hollering and you'd fuck. You'd be like, ooh, yeah, never. So I don't, I don't understand this. Every guy's slept with a mud duck. No, he ain't. I don't have to. I wish Alan was here. I wish Alan was here, she. Straight up, I don't know. I come from the days where Kappa's pretty boys, we got the best. I got the best of the best. And y'all can have the rest. The best of the black women, I was able to sleep with whatever white woman, I can get what I want. 
to this point right now, I'm attractive. Women of all races are, find me attractive. I'm that's not a race. I, I've dealt with women who are like, normally I'm not into black guys, but you, yeah, I mean, so I'm different. While I may not be in the 5% that's pure alpha males, I'm certainly alpha with beta traits, but that's only about 10 to 15% of guys. I need you guys who are beta males to understand something. You can evolve from being completely beta with beta traits. You can become beta with alpha traits or you want to put enough work into it, you can become an alpha with beta traits. But beta with beta traits, you're, 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 you're doomed. Your life is going to be transactional sex, sex with prostitutes at best. You are never going to have a emotionally profound, emotionally significant relationship with a, with a beautiful woman. And that's how it's always been for beta males with beta traits. Shout out to Alan Roger Curry. What do you guys think? When we back in the days when we were hunter gatherers or an agrarian society, everyone didn't get a wife. Everyone didn't get a mate. Beta males couldn't get wives and kids because you couldn't protect them. He said, I stopped counting when I hit 50 women. Let me tell you, man. Look. And there was a time where there was a badge of honor, but I, I would say that there's a certain level of comp, there's, there's a certain kind of confidence that comes with knowing you can seduce a woman. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. So that's, you gotta be romantic sometimes. You gotta be, so understand something. If you are unmarried, single, if, you're in, if you fall in the incel category, you have to get out of the incel category, if nothing, el if nothing else, for your, what I find is most incel, the guys that fall in this category, suffer from some form of depression. There's depression, um, anxiety. They're not happy. They're, they're just simply not happy. Single, un single, unattached, si these single men are not happy. They're living life on numb. David, do you need to call in? So basically a lot of us a reason of facsimiles of the lie our mothers and church pumped us out to be. No, dude, you, you're your own responsibility, David Little. It's not your mother's responsibility, nor the church's responsibility. It is 100% on you. You are a grown man. I'm responsible for yourself. After 18 years old, nobody owes you anything. You're responsible for yourself, David Little. I'm 38 and I'm an incel and I wonder why my success rate as a salesperson is greatly affected or the fact that I can't relate to other men. Being. Call in, David, because I will say a lot of you incels are entitled. You're entitled and you think you should get more than you're worth. And especially when it hits millennial, in, incel and millennial is synonymous. I don't know any incel, very rare do I find incels in generation X. There are some, but here you go. Don't ask questions. Let's talk about it because, again, when I coach with men, I I work with men who I've who I who have gone from incel to relationship, gone from incel to wife, beautiful wife on top of that, and this dude's a little bitty, fat, pudgy ginger. See, I laid the groundwork on why it's on why it's difficult, but there have always been beta males. There have always been socially awkward dudes. What are you gonna do about it? Johnny Blaze, what do you got? Mm. Oh, Sebastian hey. Williams. You, 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 nobody wants to hear what Sebastian Williams has to say, right? This is the same guy that was on last night complaining about the white man. Everybody, let's let's look. Everybody, go to hold on, Johnny. Hold on. Let's go to Sebastian's page. Sebastian is the guy who who 
told everybody that they need to stop being wimps, take care of the kids, and compete. This is the guy who says he needs to compete, but he's not, he's not competitive. But then I go to his page, and I got Overwatch, and I got warning 16 plus. What kind of freaky shit are you looking at, Sebastian? Let's look. What, what kind of stuff are you looking at, Sebastian? What the hell's going on with Sebastian, man? This is the dude from last night. This is what's on his page. Warning, 16 plus. Huh. Notice how mad he sounded last night? Because I asked him, you have a girlfriend? No. He ain't getting none of that. That's why you can worry about white, this the dude worrying about white supremacy. Let's, let's show that again. This is the dude that was talking all this stuff about white supremacy and the white man. This is the dude that was in Philadelphia saying it was the white man's responsibility. This is what he got on his page, y'all. You, 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 you see why I told you? He's, a, he's full of shit. See? He don't seem to realize that I work with dudes like him and I read them all day long. Mm-hmm. Got a whole white woman on this page. He probably got some lotion in his hand right now. Anything to say, Sebastian? Come on. Tell us why the white man keeping you down. Sebastian, come on out, man. Tell us why the white man. Notice Sebastian that went real quiet, y'all. He said it ain't worth it. That's what he said at 1029. That's what he said. 1029. Now Sebastian, quiet as a church mouse. Sebastian would be that very one dude, as soon as he, if a white woman gave him, uh, the, let him smell even the inside of her pinky toe, this dude would start busting splendiferous nuts all on himself. Look at him. Look at him. Don't sit there and try to argue me down and tell me how I don't get it. And tell me you're talking about the, wasn't this the same dude talking about Robert F. Smith and how he's one of them sellouts and how he'd rather have the $10 janitor than the executive? This is this dude. This is him, this is his page. This is Sebastian Williams, that's him right there. Notice he ain't said nothing. See, you incels like this, I got no sympathy for. Cause you're angry and you're misdirected anger. His anger, you think he would be as angry if he was able to slide up in that right there? No, oh, he ain't said a word. Cricket ass quiet. Come on, Sebastian. Come on, everybody. Throw in a throw in 99 cents for Sebastian's uh Sebastian's KY fund. Come on. Y'all help Sebastian. Cause he up there in Philly. Mm-hmm. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze, you gotta unmute yourself. Yes, sir. How you doing, Kevin? I'm sorry, man, but I had to roast this dude, man. Hey, I understand. Punk motherfucker. I'm sitting there and arguing with me all last night and got a whole white woman up here. Pro-black Sebastian. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, is he the one Is he the one the other night talking who, who really couldn't answer any of your questions, the Mr. The finance went, degree? The dude that went to, yeah, he, went, he was going to school for finance and going to just all of a sudden jump out and do his own job. Oh, and yeah. That was that dude. Okay. And he gonna come in and talking crap tonight. And then I'm like, I just happened to click on his page and look at what he's showing. Sad. I mean, at least it's a woman, but dang, it's funny. Overwatch and PS4 broadcast. See what I mean? Socially awkward incel, that's an incel. And most incels I feel empathy for, but I don't feel, I don't, but that's what I don't want them to do. I don't want them to turn into these guys to where they are angry and start outward projection. <laughs> so what you got for me, Johnny Blaze? Actually, man, uh, I just clicked on and actually I was having a hard time seeing you on YouTube. So I happened to see the uh, Zoom room. I thought oh, you were you listening like to the show? I was, but hey, you know what? I appreciate everything that you do. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I think you give a really good message to professional men. And I think when you did your professional piece the other night about the whole dreads and whatnot. I went back and I watched the original stream with uh, Steve with uh, with Steve the Dean and O'Shea and I listened mm -hmm. to your, your stuff. And everybody who 
well, not say everybody, a lot of folks who got on who argued with you, they truly did not one pay attention to what you were talking about. And when they tried to come, tried to answer it, they used a bunch of rhetorical rhetoric, had mm -hmm. no no basis in fact. Um, which, hey. That's what's up, man. Okay, I got two more guys on here. Um, hey, Johnny, I'm gonna put you back in the waiting room, but you'll stay no over here, okay? Well, I wanna get these other guys. I got Tony and uh, Moto G7 Play. Which one? Speak up, guys. <laughs> Sebastian ran away. But I was all kind of uh, Robert F. Smith. Look at who he's married to. Man, look at who's on your YouTube page. Look at who's on your playlist. Golly, that's embarrassing. All right, you got your camera on, Moto G7. You got your camera on, did you want your camera on? Until you, all right, now I don't know you guys, so I want to hear what you say first before I let you have your camera on. What we got, Moto G7? Speak up. All right, Moto G7 play, going once, going twice. How you doing, Kevin? What's going on, man? What you got for me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, man. Hello? All right. Tony, what's up? Oh, hi. I just wanted to say how you've been an inspiration to me. Oh, my bad. Sorry about Go that. Ahead. I just, I stumbled across your videos, I would say like a couple months ago. And that's just, I haven't been able to schedule a meeting with you, but just hearing your motivation, I've been able to move and make moves in my life. Just wanted to thank you. No, oh, no problem. Mm -hmm. No problem. Appreciate it, fam. And then, um, I will be scheduling a session with you because I do have some questions. I don't want to be rude and try to ask a question, even though it's your live stream. Okay. Well, uh, and some well do that, man. I, I'm try to help you any way I can. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put Tony's gone. Let's see if Moto G play. Moto, are you ready or not? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, man? What you got? Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead, man. Well, I'm 34 years old, man. And uh, yes. I've, been to, I've been trying to figure out what me and wow. women, you know, in particular. I need you to mute. I need you to mute the YouTube channels in the background. You're 34 years old and you've been trying to figure out what? Come on, man. Live show going on. 34 years old and you, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, um, go ahead and go to Todd. Todd, what's going on? Todd, your mic getting on. Man, y'all need to figure out how to use, <laughs> use the basic technology and stuff, man. See, a big part of why guys, I understand how a lot of guys get into this. This Hello? Yeah, what's going on, Todd? I'm doing good. What do you got for me? Yeah, um, I'm doing work right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically uh, doing freelance and uh -huh. I got all the stuff figured out. And I'm just trying to get the uh, personal stuff figured out. So is get, there... get to get to the main, what what the personal stuff with what women? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how old are you? Uh, say thirty. 
Say 30. No, is it 30 or not? You know, 30. I can't. Huh? 30, 30. Where do you live? What city? Uh, Bloomfield. Bloomfield, Illinois? Connecticut. Indiana. All right. So 30 years old. Did you go to college? I'm balancing work and college. So you're in college now? Right. All right. Did you, when you were in high school, did you go to the prom? I skipped it. All right. When was the last time you had a girlfriend? Uh, sheesh, man. Uh, it's been a while, man. To be honest. I don't know how long, man. Uh, shit. Uh, truth is what, here's the thing. Give me the truth, man, because I'm going to get to it anyway. Have you ever had a girlfriend? A uh, long time ago. Uh, a lot younger, yeah. Uh, what does that mean? Second grade? No. I mean, no. I mean, a real girlfriend where she claimed you, you claimed her. Yeah, I was out in public going to the movies, kissing and that kind of stuff. I'm be honest, high school. Say that. Okay. What high school? Are you a virgin? Yeah. All right. So you thank you. So here's the reality. Most of the time you would have learned about women and girls would have been in junior high to high school. Most guys have sexual experiences around 16 to 18 years old. This is the one who can't. Thanks you for address topics most men are afraid nope, to cover. No problem. Then they then you go to college yeah. to have a couple of more. But when you're at your age, it is going to be difficult to learn the you first up you're going to need some coaching, some one-on-one -on -one interpersonal communication coaching. Because the mm -hmm. stuff you would have learned in the developmental years, you didn't learn it. Mm -hmm. So thing is at 30 years old. Women and men expect you to have matured to a certain point. You're still functionally the guy who, you're still functionally and emotionally who you were when you had your last girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Couple that with being a virgin. Mm -hmm. Even if a woman said, let's go back to my place. At 30 years old, are you, uh, are you, in, are you in really good shape? Yeah, yeah, I exercise. Okay. Um, would, uh, hold on, uh, Todd. I'm gonna put you on mute. Um, have you ever? Uh, let's say, do you know how? Have you been around? You know, see, female anatomy. Do you know what to do? If a woman were to say, "Let's hook up," would you know what to do? Do you do you know how to kiss? Do you know how to pleasure her, or do you, or would you freak out and just run away? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm still here, yeah. yeah. What, what, would, what, do you, would you know what to do with a woman? I mean, I know the basic stuff, to be honest. All right, so these are all things you gotta learn because if you, if you don't have any kind of confidence, see, if you, most guys don't approach women because you'll be like, well, what, what would I do if she gave me her phone number? And if we mm -hmm. talk, and if all this happened, and she said, you know, skip this stuff, Lynn, let's just go back to your place. Do you have condoms? No. All right, then you're not ready. Mm -hmm. You're not approaching life as a healthy, sexual, functioning male. You're mm -hmm. not even prepared. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But you need somebody like myself, somebody who's able to talk you through this stuff, and then you got to take it out to that world. Uh, why, let me ask you something. Why haven't you hired a prostitute? You know, I just, you know, I don't think that's the way to go, to be honest, man. What do you, excuse me? Don't I don't you think that's that? the way to, I don't think that's the way to go, man. It's why? Like, you know, it's like you got to get to know somebody and, you know, going that way, like, leads into, like, Todd, to Todd, you know, like, Todd, most so. incels are overly romantic about sex. right, right. right. I spent three Maybe hours talking, I, I, Todd, I talk to incels daily. Right. Most of you had this Disney romance. I don't want to hire a prostitute because it wouldn't be real. Well, guess what? You got to do what you got to do, buddy. You're behind. I mean, isn't the uh, incel thing to do is uh -huh. to do that, though? Excuse me? Isn't that the, isn't that the incel thing to do, though? Well, if you want to stand in cell, I mean, if you want to keep jacking off every day, I mean, but why you keep want to keep busting nuts on yourself? 
You know I'm saying like, isn't the incel thing to do is to do that though? To hire a prostitute? Yeah. No, I'm talking about you. And right now we're worried about you. You don't have the confidence or the experience to even make it happen if a woman would take, a woman would offer you sex. So you got to knock these things down. You need to lose your virginity. You need to know what it feels like so you won't feel under pressure. Stop being so romantic about it. I mean, you're not romantic enough to not watch porn. You pleasure yourself. Get with a woman. Get with a professional. Learn what the female body looks like. Learn how it operates. Practice on her. You have to pay for it. And this, then at least when you approach a woman in the real world, you won't be, you won't be uh, afraid to jump in the saddle. But this is why guys like you need coaching because you lived in your head so long and you have so many things crossed up that you make it so complicated to where even if a woman wanted to fuck you, you couldn't. I'm not talking about what I, what I feel. I'm telling you what to know. I deal with incels every day. And at 30 years old, understand something. Most what, what should have happened is your father or your uncle or your older brother should have taken you to a whorehouse at about 18 years old to, to get you to lose your cherry. That's what the best little whorehouse in Texas was about. What was one of the things the guys used to do before they went to the military? They would take them to a whorehouse, have them lose their cherry because you'd hate to die a virgin. All right, right. Area. That's the best advice you're going to get, buddy. All right. All right. Look at what brothers in the chat rooms have to say. Uh, remove. Uh, no, we got TFL World. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to go to David Little next. Moto G7. I still can't hear you, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, man. How you doing, man? That's good. Let's get right to it. I got other people in the queue. I've been waiting for you for a minute. What can I get? I just, yeah, man. I've been trying to figure out where I stand, you know, with, with women, man. I mean, I'm How not old an incel. How I'm old are you? I'm 34. Okay. Um, and where do you live? I live in uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. You're here in the city. Uh, did you go to college? No, I didn't. Uh, and what do you do for a living? I work at, I do warehouse work. All right. So average guy here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, are you a virgin? No, no, I'm definitely not. Uh, well, it's not, it's not an insult. I just had a guy who was a virgin. No, so, I'm not. A, no, okay, no, I'm just, not a virgin. Okay. It's, it's not an insult. This is why I'm, I'm trying to, I'm making it to where it, it doesn't matter. I just need to know where you are. So you're trying to figure out where you stand with women. Yeah, I mean, um, when was the last time you uh, had a relationship? I mean, you, uh, that's the whole thing. I never, <laughs> you never had, so you never had a great, okay. No, nah, I never experienced, but I, you know, I had encounters. No, 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 I need, no, no, no. What I'm, no, that's what I'm asking. When was the last time you had a, a woman that claimed you as her boyfriend? Y'all went out in public to the movies and dinner and things like that. And she said, This is my man. I see. That's the thing. I have experienced that, but I ain't never actually been called that. Not okay, seriously. No, no, okay, okay. So you've never had a relationship. All right. So mm, not okay. technically, but not I have been with movies. Okay, okay, look, no heat, no judgment, but I gotta get to the basics. If you want me to help you, I gotta get yes. to what I need to. So you've had sex though. How did you how did you have you ever used a prostitute? No, it'd be women I know. I have got to know one. Or, you know, individually. All right. So you I've done it too. Right. But when you have sex, normally when you have sex, how does it happen? So because it does not happen in the context of a short term or long term relationship like most people. That's how most guys have sex. So how do you have sex? Is it with a prostitute or was it just a an a an a hookup? Um it, for example, it might like I might see a woman at the store or I might be at a Walmart and I might get a number. I might talk and then I might go to her house or whatever. And that's how it happened. 
chief, I just asked, is it a prostitute or is it a hookup? So that sounds like some sort of hookup, Netflix and chill, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. What I'm getting from you is you're not a very clear communicator. Okay. All right. And there's only so far you're going to have a rela- with women when you're not a clear communicator. If 34 years old to never have a relationship is abnormal, it's not the norm. There's something off with the way you talk to women. I mean, if you can talk to a woman and meet her at a grocery store and y'all can eventually have sex, what happens after y'all have sex? Do you ever go anywhere with these women? I, I have. Let me put it this way. Do the women, when you, after you have sex with women, who ends the interaction? Is it the women ghosting you or you leaving them? Be honest. Women leave you. Women leave I'm, you. <laughs> women leave you, brother. <laughs> women leave you. I know it. You know it. Everybody in the chat room know it. So the guy who can get casual sex can't maintain it. That means there's a problem with the way you relate to people. And that can be addressed. You need to actually work with somebody to get through whatever your issues are in your head and then start becoming a more effective communicator. Because you're not a virgin. You can have sex, but you can't keep it. That's why you can't get a woman. Because in order to keep a, a woman interested, you got to be interesting. You understand? Well, how do you be that though? I can't give it to you in in a thirty minute in a just a just getting to know you. I'm telling you, thirty four years old. You are you living an interesting life? I mean, you're thirty four working in the warehouse. What are you doing that's interesting? I mean, I like to work out. Okay. I mean, I like to so I like to go out, you know, places and visit places and stuff. Okay, you know, I don't. You doing this interesting? I mean, I'm in Atlanta. You in Atlanta? You see a woman, I see her. How you gonna beat me? What you got to tell her? Kick, kick it with me, cause I'm got this to offer. I like to do this. I like to do that. This is what I mean. Interesting people, guys who live interesting lives, have no problem with women. Not keeping them, getting them or keeping them. All right, uh, I'm put you on. Uh, go ahead. You got a follow up question, David? I see you. Oh. You got a follow up question, Moto? I can't, I can't fix. It. I can't fix it, and I can't fix it in five minutes. But you spent 34 years getting this way. Take some of that warehouse money and work with a professional because if you don't learn how to become a more charismatic communicator, if you don't learn the skills to actually be able to make friends and and sustain relationships. Can I I, I add on what you're saying? Go ahead. See, I didn't have have none of that when I was a kid, man. I mean, I was a kid, didn't didn't have friends. Um, I didn't go to my, uh, my, I didn't go to my uh, proms and nothing like that. And what, and at, at 34 years old, that's your responsibility to address. It's nobody's mm-hmm. concern but your own. No one cares what you did not have. Mm-hmm. That's your problem. That's it. I didn't have a father. That's my problem. Everybody got something. But when you're next to a beautiful woman, after you have sex, that's you, you gotta you gotta fix that issue. It's blood sport out here in, in mating and dating. It's not fair. You gotta compete. Okay. Or you can keep doing this. But I tell you what, it'll get old real quick. 34 is probably already getting pretty damn old. Because it sounds like you've never had a loving relationship with a woman. You never had a woman rub your head and tell you it's going to be all right. You never had a woman. You see, guys who never had a woman's love, you're missing a lot. Even though, even the crazy stuff they want to say in these spaces, 
FBI women, beautiful women who are feminine and inspirational, provide a hell of a lot more than just vagina. But you got to bring that out of a woman. All right, man. Hope that helped. All right. David, what's going on? What you got for me? How you doing, Kevin? Uh, can you hear me? I can. Alexander in TFL World, I see you in the uh, waiting room. Go ahead, man. Okay, sorry about that. I um, You're the sales guy, right? Yeah, I work um, for Sprint. I uh, do uh, sales and things like that. And I noticed that even though I outwork a lot of the other agents, I don't have that same gusto or... I guess, you know, we speak into opposite success. I don't have that appeal. And I noticed that a lot in my life, you know, being shorter, not blaming, but being shorter. How tall are you? I'm only 5'5". Five, five. Super slides 5'5 five, five and gets plenty of ass. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to use that as an excuse either, but. But you're in sales? I, yeah, I'm in sales. Are you in outside sales? Um, in, Well, in store, you know, like selling like actual phones. Okay. I'm also training you for businesses and things like that. Okay, so you're inside sale. You're 38? Yeah, just turned kind of shape are you in. Um, I, I'm overweight, working on so it right Okay, okay, you got two struggles already. You can't be short and fat. Yeah. Two strikes, you gotta pick a struggle. That's true. Cooper slides five foot five, but he's yoked. You know that. Why are you short and fat? Mm -hmm. Why? You know women don't, I mean, you why? Um, I just you're not rich, you're not rich. You can't be short and fat. Yeah. How much uh, about how much do you make a year? Um 40,000. And how old are you? Well, almost 40. So you're under so 40 years, so you so you're underemployed too. Yeah. All right, bro. So you so short, I don't have to worry about that. But your weight and your money. Fuck with your confidence. Oh. Wow. Wow. But the thing is, dude, this is not new information to you. How many jobs do you have? Um, just one for right now, for the moment. At so, the moment. Why, so why are you content with making 40 grand a year? Um, just not, I've never been that used to having that much money. That much money? Like that ain't that. shit, dude. I know. So let me just get right, let me get right down to it. In nature, you would be the kind of male that would not need to have, you would not need, why would, why would the female of the species want to take your genes and put them into the next generation? Correct. Short, I mean, you're fat, underemployed, and, and unambitious. Should should males like that in the in the animal world be able to mate? No. We are animals. Males like that don't get access to the, the females, man. And if you was, and if you did sneak up and get the, some pussy, the alpha will come in and knock you off in mid stroke. Pretty much. But this is on you, though, brother. All the stuff we talked about is 100% in your control. You have to deal with your lack of ambition. See, it's one thing to say I'm making $40,000 a year, but I'm working 60 to 80 hours a week. You can't relate to married men. These are the reasons you can't relate to other people because married men have already got a woman. He's already got that. At 38 years old, is this what you thought you'd be in life? No. And what are you doing about it? Um, working out. No, you um, ain't working out your fat. That's true. See, this is why I, I had these conversations because a lot of this stuff gets lost in the sauce when women start talking about women and these red pills and all this other kind of stuff. This ain't got nothing to do with women. See, at five foot five, at five five, you should be you should be in shape for you. Mm -hmm. You should be in shape for you. You should you should be out earning what you can because you understand 
the world at 38 years old and you're, 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 you're past middle age for a black man. You should be out earning and doing something more. Honestly, a lot of guys end up just quitting in life. And that's fine, but you get a quitter's reward. Exactly. And see, what, wow. I can't do, and what I can't do is sit here and rub your head like your mom and tell you everything will be all right. No, what, does your father no. say about what does your father say when you talk to him about this kind of stuff? We never really had that type of relationship. So I, like, yeah, I didn't grow up with him like that. So we're starting to kind of bond. So my other brothers, they're married. So he talks about married stuff. Um, How many brothers me, do you have? It's, um, How many eight, brothers exactly, do you have? Um, six brothers. And they're all married? The majority, just the little ones in college right now. Uh huh. Have you ever had a girlfriend? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. How long were you with your girlfriend? Two months. And and the girlfriend before that? That was like seven, six, seven years. Okay, that's that's what rubber meets the road. Have you ever really been successful with women? No. So if you come from a line of men who get married, the common denominator in this situation is David. Mm -hmm. You got plenty of examples around you. Be honest. Do you feel sorry for yourself? At times, especially these days. You need, uh, have you ever been, have you ever had to go see a clinical counselor? Um, a long time ago when I worked at a call center, I did. And what was the diagnosis? They were saying, I pretty much, actually I stopped going because I felt it wasn't getting anywhere. Oh, okay. Let's stop. Number one, what was the, what is, what was the diagnosis? They were saying that I just lacked confidence. Like I okay. didn't. So they said lack of confidence. Or not assertive. Right, not, not assertive. assertive. Yeah, so I talk about CIA, confidential and assertive. So we went to see a, a, a mental, a, a, a clinical professional. They said you lacked assertiveness. Did they give you, did they prescribe any medication? No. All right. And then you quit. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Why? Not at all. Huh. You quit when a professional tells you you lack assertiveness. Um, when was the last time you ever had a fight, physical fight? Um, 10 years ago. Where was this? This was during an altercation with my friends, they got in a fight. I got, you know, I jumped into it with them to help them out, you know? So you jumped in a, into, a, into a, a big fight? Yeah. When was the last so time you were in a one-on-one -on -one fight? One on one fight was, you would say, I honestly say that would be like high school, like 10th grade. So that's years ago. Did you win or lose? I won. You won. Okay. What was the, do you remember who you fought? Um, it was a kid. He was a, uh, was a Guyanese kid. And he was, I guess, up and coming, trying to be popular. He would tease and bully was me. Was he younger than you, older than you, bigger than you, smaller than same you? A, same age, bigger than me. All right. So you won. All right. Yo, you have zero confidence. Um, and you're a quitter. Um, you're underperforming. And you lack ambition. You need to go enroll in martial arts or boxing somewhere and let somebody knock the shit out of you because you don't know who you are. A man wow. really begins to know who he is when he has to taste his own blood. You've lost all kind of juice for life. You're working by, you're just living, just getting by, just doing enough. You don't have to suffer, you don't have to struggle. Men, we're animals. We have to, we, there's, a, there's a competitive fire that goes along. When you have to fight, you need to get back into the fight because your first instinct is to quit. If you actually had to eat what you kill and provide for yourself every day, 
would you be able to take care of yourself? Not at this stage. No, so you'd have to have men like myself provide for you. And you think you should have pussy because of that? You'd be over there with the bitches. Yes, yeah, correct. And if you wanted to come challenge one of us, you could you whoop, can you whoop us? No. So you'd sit back there with the betas. So you gotta you gotta do something about it. And you hit that on the point because that even brought something to my mind. Like I usually towel down these days when competing. Yeah. I want to get along. I want to get along with everybody. Beta males fear being bullied by men and rejected and ignored by women. Beta males will accept being blatantly disrespected. Beta males seek to avoid confrontation. Beta males try to just get along. Beta males desperately want the attention and romantic affections of women. This stuff can be addressed. You don't have to remain a beta. I've given you plenty of time. Now book a session. See, but if you've been following, how long have you been following me? Um, it's been about six, seven months. Why like I saw you, you. Why haven't you got the part-time job I told you to get? Wow. Wow. I had the op- see, and see yeah. what I want everybody to understand is this is what happens when you have good information and you and you have no assertion. Not a matter of information. He knows everything that needs to be due. He knows he's overweight. He knows he lacks ambition. He knows he lacks confidence. He knows he's been told what to do, but yet every, he's still waking up doing the same damn thing. This is 100% on you, man. You're getting the life you deserve. Uh-huh. You're getting the life you deserve, and, it is, and you have 100% earned it. You want to better, do better. You want better, you got to do better. Nobody's going to give you anything. Correct. Got it? Got it. Thanks. All right. Uh, Let's see. We got Alexander up next. Alexander. 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 All right. Uh, let's see. We got Alexander. Alexander. Hello. Yes. Um, hi. I was just tuning into some of the stuff, and uh, um, some of the stuff kind of resonated with me. But at the same exact time, uh, I kind of disagree with some of the things you're saying. Uh, okay. You disagree. Uh, first off, who are you? Um, Alexander. How old are you? 20. How many men do you work with? Uh, how many men do you work with? Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. How many men do you work with a coach? None. Okay. Why does your opinion matter? Uh, everyone's opinion is valid. No, it doesn't. No, that doesn't. 20 year old guy who's doesn't know shit. You got, you got an opinion. But you have no lived experience. You're 20. I'm 50. You think your experience, your opinion matches my experience? Go ahead. Enlighten us. Well, no, but, you know, I, I have no problem. Enlighten no. us. Enlighten us, 20-year-old. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just simply saying that you're coming off as if I, I have no problem with self-improvement. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in self-improvement amongst all of them. Congrats. But at the exact same time, Hold on, am I coming, hold on, Alexander, am I coming off like saying something I know? Uh, halfway. Oh, I, huh? Uh, halfway. Am I telling you what I know? But what you know. Am I telling you what I know? From my, I guess. Lived, am I telling you what I know from my lived experience? And I've, I've given plenty of examples of people I've worked with and you listed the guys I just talked to. Am I telling you what I feel, what I think, or what I know? Uh, what you think? No, I'm telling you what I know. That's why I've been able to demonstrate it for the last three people. So you are telling me how I'm coming off, but I'm coming off with what I know. If it's real, what difference does it make how it's coming off? That's your feelings. Two plus two is four, no matter how you feel about it. Proceed. 
I just had three calls with men. And they all said, wow, thank you. I just find it. Mm -hmm. I, find I, it I just, I don't know. I just feel like you're going really hard on you a lot of You feel like them. it. What would your father say? I'm, I, I'm pretty sure my father would be very proud of me. No, no. What would your father say about the things I'm saying to these men? He would say that you need to be. Uh, your father was you in know, the household? Your father raised you? No. Right. But mama raised you. Yes. Right. Look in the chat room and everybody's saying the same thing. You look in the chat room, no one's co-signing with anything you're saying so far. At 300, I'm a 400 people watching. I got three men that I just talked to and 400 people in the chat room. You're the one standing in opposition. What's not like the other things? Is it, no, me? I, Is it me? No, it's not that. It's just we're living in a society full of women who just truthfully just don't deserve half of the stuff that you're saying like they don't deserve really just, okay tell me what happened the last time you had a relationship with a woman it was terrible okay when how long ago was it <laughs> about four years ago four years ago you were 16 yes how long were you in this relationship about a year so you were in there from 15 to 16 how old was she uh can't recall but about the same age hold, hold on you can hold on hold on hold on hold on that does not compute. You don't recall the age of your relationship? No, I don't think about stuff like that every day. No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You were 16 four years ago. You don't recall the age of a woman you said you were in a relationship with for one year? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It's called truth. And that sounds like a lie. <laughs> okay, sure. How old was she? It, it, that's not the point. Okay, Unre again, I know guys, this is what, these, this is the young men we're talking to. Notice that the 20 year olds are the ones that have all the pushback and the feelings. But I'm asking this 20 year old man just to tell me how long ago was your last relationship? Four years ago, you were 16. How long was it? One year. So you started that when you were 15. Yes, how old was the girl? Uh, don't matter, don't know. Why the defensiveness? Just a fact. Well, I, I just, just hate how you just go in on men all I'm not day. going in on men. I'm, I, I'm talking to you. And I'm just asking you facts about yourself. You said women don't deserve these things. Okay, I did not say they did or didn't. I'm asking you what happened the last time you were in a relationship. You said it was she horrible. Was the same Let's exact age. About it. How old was she? The same exact age. Okay, she was 15 years old. All right. Yes. And why were you and you guys were was she your official girlfriend? Yes, she was my official girlfriend. Okay. So you guys were both 15 to 16 and you said it was horrible. What happened? Uh she cheated on me. Okay. She had sex with somebody? I'm not trying to embarrass you, man. I'm just trying to understand. Yes. All right. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, that, and I'm, that hurts. I understand. Did you guys have sex? No. Okay. Are you are you still a virgin? Yes. Okay. This is trauma. I'm not discounting your level of hurt, man. I, I know. I remember what it feels like to love somebody and have them hurt you. Have you tried, have you dated anyone since then? No, I've not. Okay. So you want to, so would it be fair to judge all of womankind based on what one 15 year old woman did five years ago? Well, I said that until a lot of my peers and looking on YouTube, I realized man, it's, I, I it's just a lot asked, of men. I, young man, I asked you a very pointed question. I didn't ask you about all the videos you watch and everybody else's experience. I'm asking you about yours. Would it be fair to judge all of womankind by the thing that one, with one 15 year old girl did five years ago? No. Right. 
So when you tell me, when you start telling me how women aren't this and women aren't that, I'm telling you, you have not had enough experience with women to know anything. You've had your heart broken, stomped on, crushed. I, I get it. And there are far too many young men like you that, like I said in my earlier stream, today's modern woman has had more sexual experience, is more sexually aggressive, and more sexually dominant than her male counterpart. That's what you just explained. I'm not coming off to men as anything. I'm telling you what I know. See, if you had been the one who had sex in a relationship and she was the virgin and you cheated on her, what would she likely be saying about men? Men are dogs. But you're the one, still a virgin, who has not addressed his hurt. What are you doing about addressing well, first of all, it's been five years and you were together for one year. At what, at what point do you feel like you should have moved on and healed? No, a long time ago. Exactly. So why haven't you tried? Just the day. Can't trust them. You can't, again, you are telling me, okay, so if you told your father what you just said, he would be proud of you? Um, I mean, he's kind of a womanizer, so probably not. Well, um, he's, he's reproduced them. So I, no. So you had hurt and you think as a man, because if you're talking about all these red pill spaces, we're supposed to be men, leaders, builders, and all this other kind of stuff. How are you being the man and having the burden of masculinity if you're afraid to even try? Because all the guys you follow and the well, challenge- I, I don't watch, think men should be obligated guys, to do that. You watch Donovan Sharp? Uh, say that again, sorry. What channels do you watch? Um, you, uh, YouTube channels? Yes. Uh, Steph is cold. Has a girlfriend. Um, yeah, but has a it's not for everyone. Uh, oh, he has a girlfriend. So as much as he talks about killing the beta, he's got a girlfriend. Live in. Next. Uh, let's see. Uh, I watch a lot of gaming videos. And of course. Relationship so. videos. The relationship stuff. Relationship <laughs> videos. Okay. Um, I watch, uh, uh, of course, BJ B. Sidmore. Been married, has children. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't, I don't take their life habits. I, I take their knowledge and apply it. And BGS would tell you, if BGS was here, he'd tell you what? The one experience with one 15 year old five years ago is enough to sit around and sulk and be upset with all women. I know BGS well, he'd put his foot dead in your ass. I can get him online if you like. I, I just don't think that men and the, we, you don't really need a relationship to be happy. I just don't believe that. Are you happy? Uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of happy. In the chat room. Yeah. Chat room. In the chat room. I need this. How many people, by raise of hand, think this person on the on this on this call is happy? If you think this person sounds like a happy man, put a one in the chat room. If you think he sounds like a man who's unhappy, put a five in the chat room. And here come the ones. Young man, you're not happy. Well, they, they happy. believe that a man can't okay, be happy. Okay, here's the help. thing. You're not happy, and it's not an insult. See, what you got going on is several things. One, you got daddy issues. And this is not an insult. Guys who weren't properly raised by a father like myself, we have problems listening to men in authority. We certainly have problems listening to people tell us about our current situation. We feel like they just don't get it. Young men are always, especially when you guys are in this developmental phase between high school and truly being an adult, you're still trying to find yourself. So you're not a little boy, but you're not a full man yet. No one takes you seriously. You're at the lowest of your sexual marketplace value. You're at the lowest of the rank on the totem pole. So you're always trying to feel like you're trying to be a man that you're not fully there yet. 
You have a mother that raised you, but you really don't know what it is to be a man. You have not validated yourself through sexual conquest. You have not validated your manhood or masculinity through standing up for yourself. You've not acquired a woman and actually got her on your plane. A lot of things in life that haven't happened. So of course it would make it sense to say, well, it's easier to just not do that. You don't need those things. Well, okay. Everyone that you follow has had those things. You have it. And you saying you don't need them. See, you can't say you don't need something if you've never had it. You Here's the reality. You didn't want to have your heart broken, but you did. You don't want to be a virgin, but you are. You'd rather be sexually confident and assured and feel like a self-actualized male on the verge of becoming a full-fledged man in control of his life, but you're not. And you have no idea how to get there. You have no guide. You don't even have a father to talk to. So you're frustrated. And in a lot of ways you feel alone. So it's easier to get mad and anger is the easiest emotion because it's the one you can actually, it's the one that you can actually tap into, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Go back and look at the chat room. 456 people watching. I'm not trying to hurt you, but everyone in the chat room from Black YouTube, you see all kinds of people and they're hearing the same thing, young man. So when you say, you feel like I'm coming down on men, you feel like I'm doing this. I'm not telling you what I think, I'm telling you what I know. And if I wasn't talking to you, you'd probably be able to understand what I'm saying to another person, but it's personal to you. Let me give you this. You're too young to quit. There's no way in hell you should quit on life because one girl cheated on you. If you choose to be a Ipmore, a MGTOW or whatever, after you really understand what women and relationships are about, great. But you haven't even, I don't want to go that deep, but have you, what's the furthest you've ever been with a woman? First base, second base, third base? Hmm. How far? Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess uh, for going by one to five, I guess one, maybe two. So you kissed? Yes. Okay. Have you ever seen a woman naked in person? Uh, porn. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had a, have you ever taken, a, have you ever seen a woman's breast in real life in a romantic situation? That's second. No. Okay, that's second base. Third base is actually fingering her or playing. Okay, so you've been to first base. Alexander, understand that most guys had that happen um, between the fifth and eighth grade. Oh, wow. No insult, brother. No insult. Between fifth and eighth grade. You're 20. And you're in college or not? Yes. You're in college. In college is the last time you're going to have this much. Are you living on campus or no? Uh, no. But in, on college is the last time you're going to have that much access to women around your same age. Once you graduate, you'll be living in a house or an apartment. There won't be this amount of access of people your age and you're walking around with this chip on your shoulder, at what point do you think you'll end up actually losing your virginity, getting anything, anything further with women when you're not even around them? And these are guys like you I talk to all day. How am I able to diagnose you if I'm not telling you what I know, young man? That's why you're not pushing back anymore because you haven't realized, God damn, he's reading me like a book because I know what I'm talking about. And like the title says, women aren't your enemy. They're not your problem. Your problem is different. Because there are plenty of men today, even in this Me Too environment, that are happy with the women that they've chosen. I understand. So how's Alexander going to get life on track to be happy? with his options, whether or not you choose to be married or not, 
the option to do whatever you want. Because what I haven't heard you tell me is if you had the option to be around beautiful, feminine, inspirational, hot women who want to get on your program, I'm not hearing you say, I would turn them completely down and play video games. Hmm. No, but for my purpose, yes. You, but for your purpose, that means you'd still be on your plan. I'm on my purpose and I got a rotation. Alpha male strategies is on, on his purpose and he's got a rotation. Women don't have any problem. Uh, well, it, it's for different men. It doesn't necessarily work for me. I can't do, I can't multitask on that. You keep saying what you can't do. You don't know. So what you can't do, honestly, what you can't do is you can't stand up to women. You can't check women. That's why another reason you're angry with women because they won't do what you say but they won't follow you because they sense the bitch in you. They sense the beta in you. They sense the mama's boy in you. They don't respond like video games or computer programs. They respond to strength, surety, leadership, not your logic. You cannot bulk in the shit out of women. You gotta speak an emotional language that you lack. They frustrate you because you don't understand them. And you can't get what you want from them. What you truly desire from them is you desire them to love you like your mama did. Unfortunately, no one will love you like your mama did. Women are not supposed to love you unconditionally. They're supposed to love you with condition because you're a man. You're supposed to go out, you're supposed to go out and deliver. Hypergamy exists for the betterment because if not, we'd have a bunch of shiftless, lazy things going on in the world and we'd still be living in huts and caves. Women aren't your enemy. Do you understand now? Is it a I little understand. bit more? Is it a little bit more clear? Yes, I uh, I will look at it from a different angle. You got to continue to grow, brother. So don't don't stop saying can't, won't. Open your mind. Thing is, be be red pill. Be aware. Understand female nature. Understand it all. Don't be a fool. I'm not promoting anybody to be any fool. But you don't go through life cutting off things. Learn to sound. Listen to Kevin. Also, Kevin just don't. I think, I think we did some good work. Questions. Okay? Go to swing. Get back to hit the homer. You got any, you got any follow-up right, questions? Thank you. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. All right. Oh. All right. Well, we got we we got to the point. Uh, Hashtag somebody else wanted to get on. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you guys. Let me let me get Cam in here real quick. <clears throat> Let's get Cam in here real quick. Everybody that calls may not be attracted to women. Okay, Cam, what's going on? Hello, is it on? Yeah. All right, hey. Hello, what do we got going on about this subject? Wait, hold on, am I echoing? Nope. What do we got going on about the subject? Uh, well, I guess we'll just start with the, I haven't had a girlfriend relationship in seven months. Okay. Well, I know you though. Yeah. We have our, we have our time coming up, man. Do, yeah, you, have yeah. do you have something new? You want to add or you just want to be heard because i got other people all right okay so we'll just go from where i am now okay i've been working out i've been working on talking to people more i still suck at it and all that but it looks like i got hope it's getting a little better i'm kind of winded because i'm working out in between but uh i actually asked a girl out for the first time which mm -hmm. of course was no but I did it. I had to walk back in instead of doing it the first time, but I did it. Well, all right. So um, we will actually end up, check your email because we'll try to, because you off to, uh, tomorrow, we'll try to get yours in tomorrow. But I have two more people, but I'm going to address what you have to say. First thing, we got to change, we have right. to change your inner, inner dialogue. You beat yourself up a lot. You, 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 you made three negative statements to yourself. 
We're going to have to change your inner yeah. dialogue. And this is the important thing. I'm going to remove you, but I'm going to, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. Guys, you have to understand your self-talk. I went and talked to some women and of course it sucked. Take that out of there. Reframe what success looked like. I went and talked to some women. Stop caring about the outcome. The attempt is what matters when you're trying to learn. You don't, you don't hit a home run the first time at bat. It's the attempt. You got to get your shot better. It's the attempt. You got to take thousands and thousands of shots before it becomes automatic. But if every time you shoot, you call this brick, lame, weak, sucker, you'll quit. All right. Yeah, the line is still there. Who popped in? <clears throat> Eric, what's going on? What's going on, Mr. Samuels? What, I, what can I do for you? I I'm, I actually want to give some words of encouragement, if you don't mind, because I've been hearing this all night. And I want to say something as a as a former incel myself. And I will. Can I give you a short story? Just a short run. Yeah, good, because I got four people in the queue. So you got to make you. it quick. Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. So, so four years ago, I was living in Florida and now I currently live in Atlanta. And I told myself, I need to improve myself. Seriously, I need to get up. I'm, start, I'm tired of feeling sorry for myself and I need to get up, get off my ass, change myself, do what I need to do to improve myself. First thing I did, I hit the gym, lost weight. I'm in incredible shape. Everybody stares at me now. And it's an amazing feeling, I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Second step, second step, get your education up. Now, I, in four years, I was able to get two master's degrees, feel good about myself. And now I have a high paying job at 28 years old. All right. Here's my thing, gentlemen, and I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. <clears throat> the world is your oyster. It is out there. The world is yours to grab. The world is yours to grab. Mm -hmm. Here's your real. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. Here, here's, here's your real issue. And, and this is, I'm going to leave you all with this. The will for victory, because you all want a victory. The will for victory is diminished by your lack of will for preparation. Mm -hmm. Get out there and start preparing yourself for a better world for yourself today. And that's all, that's all I got to say, sir. Appreciate it, fam. Thanks for calling no in. No problem. Have see, a great day, sir. You pre see, what you heard from that man is a guy who got up off his butt and started asserting. He started doing something. You got to replace bad habits with good ones. Getting in the gym, losing weight. Then you got something new to talk about. Going to get your, your education, your degree, this, that. You got new experiences to overwrite the bad ones. You see this camera? This camera is a great camera. And as great as the pictures it takes, it ain't crap without this memory card. This memory card stores all the work. This is your brain. This is your body. It can do everything, but this is your brain. What happens if this memory card is full? Doesn't matter what I see through this camera, what I do with this camera, my brain won't hold it. You have to format this disc or remove some of the stuff off this memory card to free it up, to have some new experiences, to have some new things, to change, to have some new things to be able to work from. A lot of you guys, this is why staying in your own house, in your own room, fixated in your own headspace is so dangerous. Mike, you're in. Okay, I'm waiting for the next person to come off mute. Um, for the next person to come off mute. Mike or Keith? <coughs> Mike or Keith? Yes, Sony, Sony 6400. And the, and the camera I'm on right now, this is a Sony 6300. And I also have an RX 100 Mark IV. Hello. Uh, yes, Keith, what can you do? What can I do for you? Uh, I'm a 21 year old V. I don't want to say the word because it's embarrassing, but mm. I want to hear your- You're a virgin. Yes. There's nothing embarrassing about the truth. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I kind of went to a, well, I went to a military school from 14 to 18, so I wasn't really around girls as much. Okay. 
And from like 10, at 10, my dad died and I grew up in a very strict religious household. So I couldn't really, you know, hang out and stuff, party and stuff because my mom was very, don't have sex until you're married. Right. Yeah, so um, I'm kind of like stuck socially because after military school, I was, I, I lived on campus. For, Are you in college? School. Yes. Okay. First up, I was raised Baptist and Church of God in Christ. It does not get more straight laced than that. Yes, sir. And there was plenty of fucking going on in the churches, in the church bus. I was blue too. Church playground. Uh, you're in college. Yes. What are you studying? Um, public health right now. I switched from CIS, but okay. in May. Are you on campus or off campus? No, are you living on campus or off campus? Off. Are you involved in any fraternity, student organizations, anything? No. All right. So you just go to school to get the get the utility of school done? Yes. Do you have any friends, male friends? No. All uh, right. No. All right. So you're a, a loner? Yeah, basically. All right. What about the professional? What about start school number one? You Whatever your degree path is, start getting involved in whatever associations they have around there. You kind of interact with people. Yeah. All that backstory is just preamble. You got to get involved with people. How often are you going to class? How many days a week? I go around three. And do you sit by yourself? I mean, I sit in class, but like, I don't know, the military background kind of, it's kind of hard to. I don't want to hear how hard shit is. You ain't been, you ain't no. been to war. Do you go to class and do you sit by yourself? I sit with, with everyone else, but I don't you really talk to anybody. That. No. Why? I don't, it's, I'm uncomfortable. I give a fuck about your feelings. These are first world problems. You're uncomfortable? You said your father passed, right? Yes, that's him. Okay, so you think your father would be proud to hear his son say, I can't even talk to nobody? No. Fuck you talking about? What's uncomfortable about opening your mouth and saying, hey, how you doing? Lack of social skills. Okay, and how's that supposed to change? Uh, interacting, you're right. So how's this problem supposed to get fixed? The problem is you. <sighs> Yeah. See, the thing is, you want it easy. That's why so many of you, you, you young guys, you want you want it easy. You want to be instant. You want to be Instagram rich, or overnight famous. Or, you want it easy. You want to put in 40 hours a week, but you want to make a quarter of a million dollars a year. You want a beautiful woman, bitch. You want her to come and approach you. Man, you're in college where a lot of guys are having to dig ditches and clean toilets for a living. And you complaining about being in an air conditioned room talking to people? I mean, nah, girls are pro. I'm not ugly. I'm not, I'm, I'm good shit. looking. I'm in still. Uh, it ain't about them. It's about you. You the one yeah. said it's uncomfortable. Yeah, so you graduate, you graduate and you go out into the work world. They're going to, you go work with people. You're not going to talk to anybody. You'll, uh, you'll do what? You'll be at the entry level and work the entry level job forever because you can't go to leadership or management if you can't deal with people. Right? Yes. So at what point are you planning on growing up? Uh, I'm leaving for the military. So hopefully, you know, I don't know. That'll help me out more. Okay. So you're, you're, you're quitting college? I mean, I got like a year left after this year, but I'm going to go ahead and enlist in around June. I'm okay. leaving. Um, that might not be a bad move, man. Because yeah. to me... I haven't heard any problems yet. Talking about, I hear a lot of you guys talk about you're socially awkward and all this other stuff, but you have all these opportunities. What, what are you afraid is going to happen when you lean over to somebody in the classroom and say, hey, how you doing? My name's Keith. And you're, what, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, something good, I guess. I don't huh? know. Something good. No, I said, what do you think would happen? Uh, Rejection, I guess. I don't know.
You don't know. What's the fear? They're going to reject you just saying hello to them? Uh, the social awkwardness, that's what I fear. It's like, you know, I haven't really socialized that much in a regular setting. So it's like, I lack that. So it's kind of hard for me. Okay, again, you're saying the same thing. I'm telling you, so what? You don't know how to, there was a time when you didn't know how to walk. You didn't know how to ride a bike. What are you going to do about it? I don't care that it's hard. I don't care that it makes you uncomfortable. You're a man. Are you only going to do things that are comfortable or easy? No. Yeah, it sounds like the military is not a bad bet for you because what I'm hearing is noodleback. I'm hearing a guy who's never been forced to do anything in his life. Yeah, I come from a wealthier background, so it's, I'm not like struggling. For, so yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, when was the last time you had a fight? Um, no. military school. I fought a lot. How long ago was that? I don't know you. I'm 21 right now, so I graduated at 18, around like 17, 16. I was always the smallest dude, though. So yeah, yeah I lost him. Yeah. I won. Okay. You've given yourself convenient excuses of social awkwardness and all. You've made, you've made it to where this is acceptable. It's not acceptable. You know what you need to do. You know you need to try and you're not trying. So now you're gonna, basically what you're doing is you're going to the military to have Uncle Sam force you to grow up to be a man that you know you need to be. But you come from a wealthier background. I guess it's lack of direction. Uh, lack of direction, you know. Yeah. What the hell, is, what do you think, what do you think life is for men? You think we all, all of us walk around with people telling us, hey man, breathe, walk, say hi to her, grab a juice, take a shit, don't forget to breathe. There's no lack of direction. You're not a baby. You're 21 years old. You're making a bunch of excuses. You're right. And the problem is you have never had to really fight. It's coming from a wealthier background, you haven't had to really miss any meal. You haven't really had any struggles in life. I struggle struggle. I, no, no, I, no. You, I, had, you may have had loss, but you have not had struggle. First world problems. You have first world problems. But guess what? You've already signed up. You've already signed the papers for the military. Uh, I sign on next Thursday to leave yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, the shit's gonna get real, real, real quick. Won't be no more of this bullshit right here. Hope yeah. you tell your drill sergeant. <laughs> I'm socially awkward. <laughs> uh, <laughs> military men in the in the chat. <laughs> oh, oh, shit's gonna get real, real quick. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm just laughing that you're going to come back to this conversation and be like, God damn, I was really on some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I got more people. I right, appreciate it. All right, later, man. Uh, yeah, see, what we're hearing is a lot of this stuff, guys are just starting and stomping. <clears throat> Three more. Jay, John, Jay, what's up, JJ? What's up? Uh, it's easier to call in to talk to somebody who's not trying to hurt you. And a lot of times, a lot of men, we just need a little nudge. Jay, what's going on? Hello? There you go. What's going on, Jay? What's going on, man? What do you got? Um, <clears throat> man, basically, basically, uh, just throughout my life, I've just been getting bad energy from women. I don't know what it is. How I don't know if I like, huh? How old are you? I'm 20. Your age? I'm 20 years old. 20? Yep. Uh, are you in college? Yeah, I go to, uh, I'm in community college. When was the last time you had a girlfriend? Uh, I never had a, a legit girlfriend. Are you a virgin? Yeah. 
when was, you say you've been getting bad energy from women. When was the last time you went out on a date? I never been out on a date. When was the last time you ever actually asked a woman out on a date? Never asked a woman out on a date. How can you get bad energy from women if you've never even asked them anything? I don't think you need to ask them to know how a woman is feeling. Uh, 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 I'm talking uh, about uh, the day to day. You slow down. You're telling me you don't need to know anything. You don't need to. You don't need to ask him anything before you already know. That's what you said. I said, "When's the last time you asked a woman on a date?" He said, "Never." So how are you getting bad energy from women if you've never asked them for anything? And you said, I don't think you need to ask them on a date to know you're getting bad energy. Please explain. What I'm saying is like, I'm talking about just me working with women and just- No, I'm not around. asking about you working with women. I'm asking about you approaching women romantically. I'm not going into the vague, I'm going into the specific. You see a woman that you find is attractive or you're mm -hmm. interested in, go. And basically, Basically, you know, just the the con eye contact out there. I'm a guy who 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 believes in who believes in choosing signals, and I, I never get those. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on. You don't get to believe in choosing signals. That's some YouTube shit. You're 20 years old. Tell me about when you were 16, 18, and why you didn't approach a woman. You don't get choosing signals. Choosing signals are for select men. Choosing signals are for alpha males. You're not that. Let's get there right now. Tell me about when you stepped to a woman and she rejected you. Wow. The 80-20 rule is really I never actually asked them, but I I've, I've there you opened go. up to a conversation. There you, go. there you go. You never actually stepped to a woman. The problem ain't women. The problem is you. You expect a woman who's got plenty of options who are to send you choosing signals over the alpha males and select males. You don't think you should have to go in there and compete for them. Why would a woman choose you when she got better options? I feel like I'm a decent option. You may be decent, but you're not better. I said better. That means you got, if you're not a better option, if you want, if you want to, you want better outcomes, you got to do the work. See, you want more than you're willing to work for. You don't even want to approach a woman. You think a woman should approach you. That's why you get nothing. You're sitting back entitled. I think I'm a pretty decent pick. Good. How's that working for you? Dick dry as hell. <laughs> never had a girlfriend, never had a date and about just run down how women send you bad energy. You know, bad energy. Ain't no bad energy. It's you. And that's why I'm that's why I'm doing this show to show you you guys how you're so, so in your head blaming women for all this stuff. And you can't even tell me the first time you asked a woman out. You even you won't even risk rejection. That's how soft you are. How are we supposed to build bricks with this kind of straw as men? You won't even risk asking a woman because what? You don't want to get rejected. No, I'm not afraid of rejection. Really? No, I'm not. Not at all. Really? So uh, why haven't you done it? I just haven't. I don't know. It's no, just... you, so, oh, so, so you're 20. You're not afraid right. of rejection. Mm -mm. Uh, do you masturbate? Yeah. Do you, would you rather masturbate or get some pussy? I mean, I'd rather be with a woman, but you know. Oh, okay, okay, so let's start there. Your, your natural biology works. In order to be with a woman, you gotta go approach him and talk to him and seduce him. But when you settle and afraid for rejection, your hand will do. Are you a sports fan? Yeah. Basketball, football, baseball? Basketball. Basketball. What's a good three-point percentage? Uh, starts at 40. 40. What, what's a good batting average? I think it started at 300. 300. 300 to put you in the Hall of Fame. Mm. 300 to put you in the Hall of Fame. That's three out of 10, right? 
Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, seven out of ten times you strike, you don't, you don't hit anything. But if three out of ten will put you in the Hall of Fame. What would zero out of ten get you? Nothing. That's what you got. Who comes to see a zero out of 10 player? What woman wants to deal with a one? Women like men who other women like. Women like men who are sexually experienced. And the only way you're going to get sex, because you're not bitch, you're not famous, you're not the dominant alpha male or the super select guy. The only way you're going to end up becoming pre-select is by approaching women. So they, women can tell I'm not getting no play? Anybody, all 462 people in the chat room could tell you ain't getting no play. That's the energy you're getting. Because you're a guy that said you don't think you should have to approach women. They should give you choosing signals. Where would you rank yourself on a scale from 1 to 10? How tall are you? I'm 5'10". Five, 5'10". Ten. Five, ten. How much do you weigh? Mm. Uh-oh. I weigh about... To what? Depending on the... Day two, between 280 to 285. So you're a fat fucker. Yeah. <laughs> so you think a five foot ten, almost 300 pound dude, how much money you make? Like 482 weeks. Four, so you make 400 every two weeks. So you make 800 a month. You make uh, less than $10,000 I mean, a year. Okay. But how many hold 20 up. year olds is him? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, I was a 20-year-old and I was making far more money than that. In the 80s, when minimum wage was 3.35 an hour, so I need to hear it. How long? You got a big dick? Huh? You have a big dick? I mean, it's above average. I ain't no Ron above, Jeremy. No, 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 no. I asked you if you had a big dick. I didn't say it was above average. I don't know what that is, really. Uh, nigga, you know if you got a big dick or not. Stop the bullshit. <laughs> Every dude know whether or not he got a big dick. I know I got a big dick. You don't know? I mean... You don't have a big I, dick. That's the point. You don't have a big dick. You don't have a big wallet. You're a big, you're a fat dude. And you got a lot of nerve thinking you should get choosing signals at five foot ten and 300 pounds, making less than a thousand dollars a month at 20 years old. And women should approach you. What they get, they don't even get a big dick. <laughs> women ain't the problem, bro. Ain't no energy out women. So they, what women know is that you know good and damn well what I just ran down don't make sense. The entitled and arrogance of you don't make sense. That's the energy you get back. You get out, you get back what you put out. Because I knew plenty of dudes that was five foot ten, big dudes, and they were some players. Straight up players. My frat brother Ray. Dude looked like Kev Mack and Biggie had a, a love child. Uglier than sin, this nigga was. Face looked like a whole crunch bar. <laughs> Big soup coolers jacked up, lid, but that motherfucker had mouthpiece and they stay laced in the best pussy. Still to this day, that ugly motherfucker got mad game. Broke his shit. What do I do? Uh, you need a coach. Because you mean, got some bad information. First off, stop watching these dating channels. Stop watching all these red pill spaces. Stop watching all this kill the beta, blah, blah, blah. You don't need any more of that bullshit programming. What you need, you ain't going to get for free. And you can't watch no videos for it. Got to get them ends up. All right. Or continue to use your hand because after you get out of college, Here's the future. Don't do what I don't do what I say. Once you're out of college, you're not on. You're not in proximity with all these women anymore. You're in an apartment, a house, uh, whatever, and it's gonna be work, home, work, home. You don't go to the gym. We know that, so you ain't gonna be able to meet women there. It'd be easier once I'm out of college, though. Wrong. Oh no, no, dude. Let me tell you what where you're wrong. Where you gonna go meet these women at, Jay? I'll be where, more wanting to. Where are you gonna go meet them? I just ran down to how there's no single scene. People don't go out anymore. Where are you gonna go meet them? Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Ain't. Hold on, I need you ladies. I need this dude just said Barnes and Noble. Mm. What what city you live in? Uh, I don't know. If I, I live in Wilmington. Wilmington, Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware. Let, let's do something real quick. 
Barnes and Noble, Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware. There is one Ernst and Noble in Wilmington, Delaware. It's on Concord yep. Pike. Yeah. Hi. Happening spot. Say it again. Happening spot. There was a movie called You Got Mail. Late 90s, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan were in it. That's the last time anybody talks about going to meet somebody at a goddamn bookstore. I'll Barnes be in there. There's women in there. This dude. Okay, let's give you Barnes and Noble as the hot happening spot. You don't even approach women. So you mean to tell me you gonna take yourself to Barnes and Noble where it's cricket ass quiet and you can't approach a young college woman on campus, but you're gonna go into a quiet ass white Barnes and Noble at Wilmington, Delaware and holler at a shouty. Mm. Okay. Where else I you gonna have more where else value? No, 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 where else you gonna go meet women? A lounge. A lounge. What give me the name of the lounge. Any lounge. Any lounge. Yeah. Jay, do you have an active social life? Do you go out now? No, I don't I don't have time. Right. You don't and here's what you just proved. You don't know what the what the the social scene is like. Nothing, none of what you just said exists. People don't go to Barnes and Noble to meet anybody. Lounges. I seem to be blocked on YouTube. I don't know why, and I really want to. Uh, uh, you're probably blocked for a reason. I don't know who you are. You need to send your um, email address. No, bro. And what you're showing is, I'm not trying to insult you, but you don't know. You, what you think is, well, it, it sucks right now because I'm broke and I'm a college student. But when I'm out, I'll be, I'll be making money. What's your, what's your degree going to be in? Uh, finance. Finance. What do you what do you plan on doing for a living? Uh, plan on I plan on just I plan on somehow getting a high finance, but that's why uh, I don't really. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. What do you plan on doing after you graduate? How, being like a banker or something. And how much how much do you think you'll be making entry level? Uh probably fifty five. No. I had another finance guy on last night, and you finance guys, you go into school to get a degree that you don't know what to use it for. You'll come out making 35000 40 maybe. Oh, no. You, really? Where are you going to school at? I go to a community college now. Community but... college. Community college. And you'll have a community college degree. Where do you get your bachelor's from? I don't know yet. That's why I don't. That's exactly. all. That's what, do you, what, do you, what, what would your grades qualify you to go to to get a job in finance entry level, making you fifty five thousand dollars a year? Well, it all depends. It all depends. No, it, doesn't I depend. tell it doesn't depend, young man. What I'm telling you is, you are living in a fantasy world. You don't know these things. Let's just look at this. Look at the numbers. You're in. I watch the numbers. You're looking. You're in community college. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go to what school are you going to after you graduate? It community. all depends on how my. How my grades look. Where are I'm you go looking to go finance. to? I want to go to like Michigan or Virginia. Michigan. Michigan. And I'm, do you have scholarships to Michigan or will you be paying? I just, I just pay. Right. You mean that's student if loans. I get in. Ah, you're paying them student loans, right? Yep. Right. And you'll be out of state tuition because you're in Delaware now, right? Right. So you'll be out. So you, know why I'm blocked. Okay. you'll be going to University of Michigan at best on two-year out-of-state tuition. What's yeah. out-of-state tuition like for University of Michigan? At Michigan, uh, probably around 40. Out-of-state tuition, 40 per year? Mm -hmm. Right, 40 per year. Let's give you that. So you'll be going in for two years, $80,000 into debt. $80,000 into debt. Finance, finance degree. You said you want to be in banking? Yeah, you don't, go, you don't just get out and become a going to, in in high level investment banking. I know. What what's the title? What's the job title you are talking about? Probably like a a financial analyst or something. Financial analyst, entry level financial analyst, entry level financial analyst, financial analyst salary. Entry level financial analyst, forty six to seventy thousand dollars a year. 
When you look at that depends on the company. Who are you talking to? You're talking to a guy who spent 20 years in corporate America, right? Yeah. Why are you sitting trying to debate me on what the fuck I've lived and know? You don't even have an idea where you're going to, where you really want to go to college, what you really want to do, or how, this is why you can't get anywhere. Listen to the energy you're putting off in this real, this conversation right here. This is why your dick is dry. Look at how fucking toxic you've made this interaction right here. What did you win? What did you gain? Hmm? You ain't gonna prove me wrong. What'd you get? What'd you get? I'm not I'm not trying to prove you wrong. I well, respect you. That's that, why and I that just shows it. you how that just shows you how lack how, how low your social skills are. Listening to somebody who's trying to help you, who's actually been been in corporate America for 20 years and promoted seven times from entry level to VP. He knows what he's talking about. You still, man, you know, you know, you know. all right, motherfucker, go into eighty thousand dollars of debt. Go get you a financial analyst job. Make fifty thousand dollars a year. You still a fifty thousand dollar a year, three hundred pound, five foot ten virgin. This is why you need coaching. Because the issues you have are not going to be undone by a video. Whatever you got going on in your head is who you are. And the world responds to that. Do you get that? Yeah. If you disagree with what I'm saying, come back and watch the replay and look in the chat room. Any other questions? Uh, nah, not right now. All right, man. Oh, one more, one more, one more. Okay. Which, which, uh, which culture one do I take? Which, uh, which link do I click on? Excuse me, I didn't hear the question. You got a bunch of different options for, for the coaching, but uh, your, best it, co your best coaching would be, I'll put it in the chat room, is interpersonal communication. That would do you more good. Interpersonal communication would do you better than virtual consulting. All right. All right. Keep me posted, man. There's right. hope. You just got to listen, man. We all, all right. have to listen. Peace out. All right. Guys, understand something. Every man has to. Learn something. Uh, we got two more people. I got uh, these last two. Galaxy G J7 star. What's going on? Galaxy. Hello. <laughs> Hello? Yes, what do you got for me? Oh, okay. Didn't know if you could hear me. So um I want to ask because okay. so because I see there's like a kind of a double standard with this. Is, right. um, what's the difference between a man being like aggressive mm -hmm. and in their feelings? Um intent. Intent. Elaborate. Well, do you know what intent means? Yes, I do know what intent means. It's I'm, not trying to be fun. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to. So what do you think I'm saying when I say intent? Um, either what you know or what, how you feel. Let's look up the word intent to make sure we're on the same page. Okay. Intent. Definition. <laughs> Purpose. The purpose of the, the purpose of why you say what you say. When you're being aggressive, 
or if you're in your feelings. It's all about intent. Oftentimes when someone is in their feelings is because they are trying to demean, undercut, undermine, shut up, stifle. It, there's a negative, be, there's something negative versus being aggressive and just trying to necessarily prove your point. You're in your feelings because that's just what you start doing. You start speaking with words like I feel versus I know. You're not advocating for a position. You're trying to overwhelm someone with emotion. You ever have a, you ever have a mom and you ask a mom, can I, mom, can I, mom? Then there's a level when your mom would yell, you know, to stop. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. That's, that's in the, that, that level, she was overwhelming your reactions with her emotion. That was her way of saying, say something else in his own. Oftentimes that's what people want to do when they're you, in their feelings. It's talking, it's talking, it's, to, it's talking to you instead of talking at you. <clears throat> it can be that, but it's, it's, it's seeking to shut something down. So you can aggressively defend your point, but you're trying to move the ball further. When, you're, when people get in their emotions, they're trying to stop. It's another way of deflecting. Okay, what else? What else do you have for me? So you, you did a video in the past about lone wolves. Yes. And okay, so I have a different take on that subject. How old are you? I am 28. 28. Uh, did you go to college? Yes. I'm still going to college. You're still going to college. How long have you been in college? I've been in college two years. Okay. What did you do for, for the eight years after you graduated? What's the relevance of it? You're asking me questions. I'm asking you questions. I don't oh. know you. Uh, Galaxy G Star 7. What's the difference? Uh, the same the, the same reason I don't know most other people do. Uh, live live young, live life. and I'm just trying to understand who I'm talking to. You've been in college for, for the last two years. So what I'm trying to understand is you're saying you have a different opinion and I'm trying to understand what this opinion is based on. Experience. And that's what I'm trying to gauge is your experience. Okay. Have you, have you been out in the work world? Okay. Yes or no? Not my have, position, you been work, have you been in the work world? Work world, socially, just. Do you, okay, in the work world from 18 to 26, did you, did you manage or supervise anybody or did you just have a job? No. Which one is it? Didn't manage nobody. Okay, so you disagree with me, go ahead. Okay, so. So um, I so the thing is that people, it's not like so lone wolves don't become lone wolves. People don't wake up in the morning and say like, "Okay, well I'm just going to do stuff by myself." It's a reaction that they have to other people. Hold on. Do we get it, to choose what happens to us? No, you, we don't get, but see. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm what just, do we get to choose? We get to choose how we act. Right. So being lone wolf is a reaction. It's not a reaction. It's a choice by, no. log by logic. Logically speaking, it's a choice. You can say that it's a choice. I, no, 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 sir. No, 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 sir. You, but that no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You just said it's a choice. You said becoming a lone wolf is a reaction. And I said, do we get to choose what happens to us? You said, no. I said, what do we get to choose? You said, how we respond. I said, so responding by becoming a lone wolf is a reaction or a choice? It's a choice. Logically, it's a choice. Simple logic. But it's, but it's not simple logic. It's simple because logic. We don't, over... galaxy, we do not argue, men do not argue simple logic. It's two plus two is four. Women argue logic. 
This is where you start getting in your feelings. It's not in my this feelings. This is where you get in your emotions. feelings. It's based on this experience. is where you get in your feelings. Logic is not up for debate. Two plus two is four. Becoming, okay. Reacting by becoming a lone okay. wolf is a choice. Okay, so you're just going to act like that. No, people, I'm going to. I'm not um, going to act like anything. I'm going to. We're not going to move any further. But that's the fact we're that not people, going to, we're not going to move. Not, I'm not. We're I'm not. not we're not going to move any further until we can agree that we, you can choose to react and become a lone wolf. But you also have to acknowledge it is a choice. Sure. Sure. However, however, there's no however, because like that's just like saying but and that's just like saying fuck you. And that's like saying everything you that's negates everything you previously said. Now you're in your feelings. Are we going to talk like men? Are we going to talk or you want to do this in your feelings thing? Because if so, we can stop. As men, we're, we're mutually talking fact. No, the fact of the matter is choosing to become a lone wolf is a choice that you can make. From a response, yes. That is, a, who gets to pick that response? Other people, because how can other, other people, people. How can other people pick your response? It's not the response, it's how the can, reaction to- How can other people pick your response, pick your emotion? You get to pick. You can choose to become a lone wolf or you can choose to not become a lone wolf. I mean, are we really arguing the point that you get to choose? It's not what it's not. Choose. It's not. That's not what I'm arguing about. Well, no, but but that's the point we have to agree on or else there's but, nothing to go further. Well, I well, I had a whole well, I'm well, that's not what I'm why I'm arguing about. Not arguing, but that's not why I'm stating my position about this. That's not. Okay, so. Okay, so aside from Lone Wolf, uh, awkward people, socially awkward people, right? Socially awkward people have to be in social situations to change, right? When they choose to. Is there a question there? Yeah, there's a question there. Please restate, I didn't understand. When people who are socially awkward choose to step out of their comfort zone, they have to be in social situations to do that. Right? You know, you don't have to do anything. I'm confused. I am too. Because I don't understand what you're asking. When socially awkward people choose to step out of their comfort zone, they have to be in social situations. Life yes. is a so life is a social si life is a social si life is a social situation. More than what life provides, though. Please get to the ultimate point. I got other people. You're, not making, any, you're, not, you're not making any sense, and there are 473 people the, listening. You're okay, the ultimate sense. point. The ultimate point is the cycle. The cycle. Are you socially awkward? The cycle repeats. Are you socially awkward? I never doubted. I, I said okay. I was speaking from experience. I'm okay. not. So you're socially my... awkward. So, so, and do, how do you think this conversation has flowed? Do you think there's been a flow or it's been disconnected and choppy? I think there was a lot of questions asked. I ask you, how do you think this conversation has flowed? Should it be flowing? You, you're unresponsive. I'm going to ask you again. How do you think this conversation has flowed? It has flowed. Smooth as water. All right. If you honestly believe it has flowed smooth as water, it explains why you're in the position you're in now. No, it does not. Yes, it honestly does. No, you're, it does you're not. You're a socially awkward, sarcastic asshole, and that's cool. That's why no one likes you. Well, I it's different. I don't have that problem. Okay, I'm if I'm trying, speaking I'm, from, sitting okay. Here, I'm sitting here trying to talk to you, and I ask you a simple question, 
and you get defensive. Go back and look in the chat room. You may be a witty, funny person to yourself. I ask you simple, basic questions that you could not answer. We want to argue logic. And at the end of the day, you're the socially awkward one in college at 28 years old who can't even answer basic questions about who he is. And then I ask you to reframe a question three times and it still makes no sense. Interactions with human beings are not supposed to be this contentious. No one likes to sit around and deal with an asshole, especially an asshole who's socially awkward who thinks he's funny. That may shit may work on with your with your action figures and your comic books, but it doesn't work in the world. And it usually isn't, Mr. Samuels. Well, let me ask you, so you've been socially awkward. How's your love life? Those aren't the same. How's your love life? They're not. Do you those have aren't... a girlfriend? But you act like those have are you the had same. A girl, do you have a girlfriend? I'm not being defensive, but those I, do you have I don't do you have a girlfriend? This is my show. I get to ask the questions. Do you have a girlfriend? But you're asking that just I'm to asking, do you have a girlfriend? So you don't have a so you're unresponsive. He has no girlfriend. Have you ever had a girlfriend? No. Okay. No. Are you are you, are you currently sexually active? Or are you have you ever been sexually active? Oh great. Excuse me? You're using so, you, you know, are you a virgin? I asked these questions to everybody else before you. Yes, but you do no, no, that. No, 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 no. I asked these questions to everyone else before you. Please answer the question. Are you a virgin or no? Yes or no? Sure. All right. Uh, you can either answer the question or I can just, you can leave. Yes. You're a virgin. All right. Is that something you're proud of? I'm not proud of that. Okay, but... well then, so what is your purpose for calling? Is it to, bait, to debate with me about how there's nothing wrong and this is natural or normal or that you need some help? I didn't say that. So what is your purpose of you being here? Do you need some help with something or do you want to justify why it's, why you're here? I don't care if you're, if you're happy with your situation, knock yourself out. But what's your uh -huh. point? What's your point? My point is, is there's a cycle that continues. Right. And, and though get, a person, and, and, though a per and you get to pick it. Yes, can, we can pick. The you can pick it. You can pick, you can be become a lone wolf. You can pick to break the cycle. You can pick to address your issues. I don't care about how you got where you got. I care about what you're doing about it. But that matters because no, it unless no, it no, 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 no. See, that's the difference. It matters to you, to to the rest of us in the world. We don't give a shit. And why wouldn't yeah. it? Because Not we don't have to care about why your shit is your shit. We got our own stuff. We don't have yeah. to worry. No, no, no. Let me explain something to you. People don't have to understand why you're fucked up. People only care about how you're fucked up affects them. Human beings are selfish. You know you're fucked up. I know I'm fucked up. It's our responsibility to address our issues. People who expect other people to make allowances for them, to accept them and say, well, you know, he's fucked up. That's what your family does. Let That's me give you a clue. No, let me nobody, go ahead. Let me go nobody, ahead. Let me nobody go ahead. that. Yeah, I'll give you a clue. Socially, I'm not gonna argue with a socially awkward 28 year old virgin who wants to tell me it's the world's problem. Knock yourself out, brother. Nope. See why I t this is why I titled this show. I know these guys. I know these guys. Mike, what's going on? This is why I titled this show. I know these guys. I know these guys. What's going on, Mike? Mike, what's going on? What's going on, Mike? I mean, Mr. Samuel. What's going on? Um, I just needed some assistance with like, you know, um, just how I carry myself overall okay. and what I should do moving forward. All right. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. Are you in college? I'm not in college at the moment. I just got a full-time position at Bank of America as a teller. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, are, are you actively dating? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? 
Are you actively dating? Not at the moment. I actually just uh, got out of a relationship about five months ago. All right. Uh, are you still a virgin or not? No, I'm not a virgin. I have four bodies on me. Okay. Two cool. of them are prostitutes. Well, um, still, today. Feel, still counts. So, wh so what do you mean about how you carry yourself, personally or professionally? Kevin, this may be one of them. Uh, personally, professionally, and with women. <clears throat> well, professionally, uh, you need to work your ass off. If you got a job at Bank of America, you don't have a college degree, you're going to need to gain as much experience and volunteer for as many shitty assignments and learn as much as you can about the business. Your job okay. between 20 and 30 is to keep your head down and learn as much as you can, 60 hours a week minimum. Okay? Now, as far, because <clears throat> you got to figure out who it is you want to be, what it is you want to do. You're going to make a lot of errors. You got to have a, you got to try a lot of things to learn these things. Professionally, try to find a mentor inside of the organization. To, you know, if it's not your manager, maybe it's an older rep, someone who can take you under their wing and teach you the ropes. That'll work itself out. Personally, while you're out doing that, the main thing is number one, make sure any interaction you have with women doesn't result in any kind of pregnancy. But at 20 years old, um, I would tell most of you 20 year old guys to focus on your purpose and then having interactions with women, but not taking it too seriously. Do you want to get at the end of the day, Let's say when you're 40 years old, do you want to be married with children or something like that? What, what do you want 40 year, old, 40 year old you to look like? Oh, I would love to have children. I'd love to have a beautiful wife that's also successful. And I'd also like to break this, you know, cycle of poverty that I have within my family. <coughs> okay. Quite you honestly, you a beautiful wife who's successful. So you want your wife to work? That would be ideal. I mean, but then again, I mean, as a man, you would want to be the provider. So if I can make enough to where she would, you know, could stay at home with the kids, that would be great. See, therein, therein lies the rub. Those are two different women. Mm -hmm. So if you are not a college grad and you want a woman to be successful, most successful women went to college. Mm -hmm. Most women look at men to have at least what they have. So if you want a professional wife, you're going to have to become a professional man. Um, that, that's just something to consider. But what I heard you say is you would love to have a beautiful wife and be successful and break the cycle of poverty. The best way you, the way, best way you avoid becoming, helping poor people is don't become one. Um, but I, what I hear and what I'm kind of hearing in you is you want a woman. You want a woman now. Yes, I do, 100%. Right. What does your father have to say about this? My father passed away when I was 12. And before that, he wasn't really in my life. He was, you know, like an alcoholic. Most single, so like most of us, single mother raised boys, we always yes, are looking to replace our love from our mothers. That is going to be a huge, huge blind spot for you. Mm -hmm. Huge blind spot because um, beta males, it's more of a beta tendency to long for the love of a good woman. Alpha mm -hmm. males, uh, alpha males t tend to want to just roam and do their things, but most guys are either stuck in the point to where they want either short-term or long-term monogamous relationships or committed relationships. I would suggest this. Do you have any good friends like your, your Rat Pack, guys that you trust their, their, um, their judgment as much as your own? I have one or two. You're going to need about five. And every woman that you will consider making serious in your life, you need to run her through the gauntlet. And if anyone comes back with a ding on her whole facts, you do not take her seriously. That mm -hmm. is until you develop the experience and the maturity to be able to pick well for yourself. Because as a single mother-led young man who's out there working, you are more than likely going to pick the wrong woman. And you're gonna pick her and fall in love with it. Uh, because you kind of come off as that guy who is, you know, I'm looking for love, which is nothing wrong with that. But in today's environment, you need to get more than one opinion before a man as you commit until you can know that you can make the right choice. Did you break up with your ex or did she break up with you? I broke up with her. Why did you break up with her? Well, one night 
when we were drinking, <laughs> I had, yeah, I had wound up picking up her phone and she I cheated. used her. So she cheated. So basically, yes. okay. So Not sexually. Doesn't matter. She didn't respect you. Mm -hmm. So you did have the balls to walk away, but she had already ended a relationship. You just caught her before she was out the door. That means you chose wrong. Okay. Just take the lesson. You, 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 you were able to walk away. Don't take her back. Don't talk to her. Leave her alone. She stays in the trash heap. But you picked wrong. Take the lesson. We've all, a lot of us who have been raised this way, pick wrong. And often we get cheated on. How do you think you learn to become a better version to, be, to get to a point to where I don't have these problems anymore? You become better at vetting. Make sense? Mm. Yes. Keep your head down. Stay in your purpose. Get a mentor at work. Work your ass off. Get a part-time job. Women are, are for fun. You don't need to be starting thinking about a woman until you're about 35. When you're 35, you go get your 23-year-old wife or 24-year-old wife. By that That's time, you'll hold on. By that time, you'll have had enough industry experience, money, and you'll have a big enough disparity between your age to where she'll still look at you in a in a, in a level of reverence and respect. Don't date. Don't do not try to make a relationship with women your age. They will not look at you on the same level, especially if they have a college degree. Go ahead. I just want to say, like, you know, it would just be great to have somebody to talk to. It feels like I don't have anybody to vent to no open ears you know that's why i want a woman somebody to well, no, no 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 oh John, do, do, do. see uh-uh okay i'm about to take my belt off I'm about to whoop your ass now please tear me apart man every woman is not your fucking mother your mother is the only woman you can talk to and vent to because she had you she bore you these other women don't owe you the love a mother owes you their love is conditional and it should be Women have hypergamy. Understand something. That fairy tale shit is that, that's why you're imbalanced because you don't have a dad and a mother. You want to mm -hmm. talk to your friends. You need a mentor and a coach because daddy ain't there. But you don't talk to your woman. You you wanna you wanna lose a good woman? Go and talk to her about your problems. Go <laughs> talk to her about shit that's going on. She'll be fucking your best friend by Saturday. Man, you better, you better come on in. You want to keep a relationship going? You stay in the masculine role. You, you let your woman stay in the feminine role. She gets to vent and download to you. You go talk to the goddamn tree. You only cry in front of your woman when a, an immediate family member dies or when you break both arms. And then you can only cry for about three seconds. Man, the fuck up. Get off this Disney rom-com bullshit. That's what has most of us single mother raised boys, fucked up blue pill beta male soy boys. You ain't got the nerve to be mad at women because we bitches. Nope. Become the man you become the man of your dreams before you find the woman of yours. Feel me? That's gonna take some time. That's why I say you got 15 years. What the fuck you waiting for, man? You got you ain't but 20, man. Do you realize I laugh at 20 year olds? Dude, 10 years ago, you was in, in the fourth grade. What you rushing to get to the end for? <laughs> Life is long, bro. Life is real long. But hey, don't take my advice. Go fall in love next week. Go out here and fuck around with a single mama and shoot your load up in her and give her a baby and then have that shit break up and be on child support. Then have to work two jobs because you can't afford to do nothing else. Then see what happened. I've already told you what to do. Take some time. You don't, you don't deserve a relationship at 20 years old because the real talk, you ain't got nothing. You can't provide for a woman. You can't provide for yourself. You got no money, no security, no insurance, no nothing. If you felt you found a woman of your dreams, y'all got married next week. She got pregnant. Can you take care of a baby? Yeah, potentially. No, you can't. Not well. Not well. How much are you making at the bank? I make about a thousand every two weeks. Twenty-four thousand dollars a a a year. 
So you make twelve dollars an hour. Seventeen. Seventeen. So okay. That's great for a twenty year old, but it ain't shit for for a, a husband and a, and a kid. Uh huh. You broke as shit. Yep. That's why I mean you're not ready. You're not even emotionally ready. What you are trying to, you're trying to feel with the woman, what manhood and masculinity and purpose should feel for you. Women are add-ons to a man who's already living a fulfilled life. She's not there to be your purpose. Women don't like to be that for men. That's why they cheat on you. You put too much pressure on a woman when you try to make her your world. They're not built for this shit, man. So when you say, I want a successful woman, that's why I stopped you. I was like, ooh. The reason you want a successful woman is because you ain't going out and making plenty of money for yourself. Why don't you make that $200,000 for yourself and then have your woman stay at home? And that's easier said than done. I don't know where about, to go. Okay, how about this then? Keep going home and having your, keep going home and having your girl uh, texting other motherfuckers. Was that easy? Was it easy? Picking up a phone, seeing what you saw? Of course it wasn't easy. I had to sleep well, then, with her. Then, there, there you go. Had to wake up and tell her to get the fuck out of my crib. Well, well yeah, yeah you can, but you can tell you that, but she's still, but the point is you can talk tough like that. But it, you, you, you got to pick. You either put yourself in a position to be a man to where she would not even dare think about doing that because the consequences are too high. She wouldn't want that to happen or you become a beta male and then take your shot. The rules haven't changed. This is the way men look at the world are, especially you younger guys. But there you go, man. Hope that helps you out, man. I got to run. This, is, this show's ran too long. Thanks a lot, Mr. Samuels. I hope you have a great night. Thanks for everything. No problem. Peace. You. Okay, guys. <clears throat> oh, what a show. I wasn't expecting it to go that long. Women aren't the, the women aren't the problem. Women are never the problem for alpha males. Alpha males with beta ten, alpha male with beta traits or even for beta males with alpha traits. They're never the problem when men are doing what men need to do. Taking accountability and ownership for their situation, not blaming anybody else for, those, for the very real situations we find ourselves in. No one's trying to sell you a bill of goods. It's not an argument. Women are not the problem. Not like, not, not for a lot of the guys who I've talked to tonight. The guys who are in sales. Um, the thing is, it's a choice. It's hard work. It's what the last call was saying. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Anything worth having in life is hard. You know what's harder? Regret. Regret is a lot harder. Okay, so I see Derek Wright. Let me go ahead and check out these cash apps. Um, I hope you guys got something out of the show. If you guys got something out of this show, uh, put a one in the chat room, let me know. Um, shout out to JD, appreciate it fam. Shout out to Mike, appreciate it man. Who is this dude? He sent me the cash out and then he canceled it. Oh, that was that other dude. <laughs> okay. And then shout out to uh, Big Harry. Harry, Harry, what's going on? Look, man, your godfather is always here to try to help you out. I know it's not easy. Sorting through all this stuff with nobody to talk to and you feel awkward and lame because again, I didn't know this existed like it did two, three years ago. But I understand. I understand. And thing is, any man can take a hold of his situation. You just have to decide. Shout out to appreciate Alan Roger Curry uh, for writing that book, Mode One. Uh, if you guys haven't looked at his hybrid model, he's talked about it on, on his channel. He has a video 
talking about alpha males, alpha males are beta traits, beta males are alpha traits and pure beta males. Great, great chart breakdown. Um, <clears throat> coaching is always gonna be great for guys. Uh, if you're looking for a mentor, I have a mentor section on my Patreon pledges. Uh, at my highest Patreon level, you get two mentorship coaching calls a month with me. When you, For a man 24 years and over, you can rule out finding a mentor. Mentors are for men 23 and under. 24 and over, you're going to have to hire a coach or financially incent a mentor. I have a coach. I have a mentor Thank and you. I pay them both Thank well. You. All right, folks, <clears throat> my voice is here. My voice is going out. All right, guys, till next time, talk at you. Peace.